Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Tuesdays with Paula. I'm Paula K. Bronte, your Master Rapid Eye Technician. And today's topic is how to access personal power in your world, not in the world, in your world. And we'll talk about what that means because your personal individualized world and your experience in this life can be very different from the mass consciousness. Right? And the reason that I picked this topic is because our next chakra, this is a series where we're working with the chakras. We began actually with the third, that's the central place of personal power. And then we applied personal power in the second chakra in relationships last week. And now we're going down to the first chakra. The first chakra is the very root. It's at the base of your spine. It's located right there in the sacrum bone at the base of the spine and at the perineum. So it, it's the, it's the root chakra and it, it really, is the foundation and the fundamental energy center that supports the whole chakra system, right? M most of us know that we go up, we go from the first chakra that's right there at the very base, and we go to the second, up to the third, the fourth, which is the heart, the fifth is the throat, and then the sixth chakra is right here, that's our intuition, and then the seventh, and then we have the eighth, and then we have the ninth. And there's also an 11 and 12 and a 10, but we'll get to those. The point is that today we're working on this first chakra. And the first chakra is all about the world and how we relate to it. Our right to exist, what we deserve, uh, our relationship with money, work, action. Right? The first chakra, the color, each chakra has a color. And the color of the first chakra, that root chakra, is red. And red is, is the color of action and power and empowerment. So how to access personal power in your world, one of the things you want to do is take a look at your first chakra. You may want to do a little research on it. There'll be many charts and lots of information online that will tell you what a first chakra, how, it, how you experience it when it's overstimulated and when it's, when it's underdeveloped or underused. And very often it's going to show up for you in uh, fear of survival which right now is kind of up on the planet for lots of reasons. And when we go into the fear of survival, what we're doing in many ways is really hooking into and accessing everybody else's consciousness. What we're doing is basing our survival, our safety, our experience on what everybody else is saying and feeling and experiencing, reading the news, listening to other people's opinions, um, spending a lot of time, or even depending on how sensitive you are, sometimes it just takes a little time. Just one suggestion of something going on out there can really hit that first chakra, cause a blockage, and take you into a place of disconnection from your ability to have power over your experience in your world. Right? And when, when you are in command of your own world and your connection to yourself, your connection to your God, whatever that may be, then your ability to move in the outer world without being uh, adversely affected by it uh, becomes a really important tool for you. So let's talk more about this first chakra experience. I was speaking with someone yesterday who is just now in the throes of, and it's about the right time, uh, early 40s. Uh, she's in the, the, the threshold of beginning to realize that just about everything she has believed and thought and felt her whole life has been a result of what she's been taught by her religion, her church, fundamental, the Catholics. I think I've mentioned this before. I heard a, a bishop once say, give me a child until they're six and they'll be ours for the rest of their lives. Because those very early years, that's when we're most easily programmed. So she was taking a look at what her church has taught her, what her parents taught her, what school taught her about who she is and how to act in the world and what, what life means. And really realizing that so little of it is actually true for her. It's not who she is. So it's not uncommon if you're in your mid to late 30s, early 40s, and you're beginning to have a bit of what we call an identity crisis, not really knowing who you are, but yet always falling back to old patterns then know that, that you're, it's a wonderful thing because you're becoming aware of the fact that there's so much more to who you truly are than the old programming, than what other people have taught you. Because that's their experience, that's their world. And that's what their parents taught them, and that's what the church has passed down to them. And, and 
it's not about making anybody else bad and wrong. How, how could they teach me that? Because that's their reality. And that's what we do, right? We pass on our reality to others. However, what's happening if you're at this, at this core place in your life is that you're starting to realize that you can be the master of your own reality, that you get to create your reality. That's what that statement means, that we get to a place in our internal maturity where we can begin to realize that we get to create our own reality by picking and choosing what's true for us not just regurgitating and living on automatic based on what somebody taught us. And most likely that living on automatic and that regurgitation is very strongly attached to some kind of fear. And we're talking about first chakra, right? Which is survival in the world. How our parents taught us uh, how you have to make money, how to make money. Making money is hard. You have to go out and work. And if you don't work, you're going to starve. And, and you're going to be one of those homeless people. All the fears that are instilled. And that first chakra, if it gets blocked up and clogged up with these uh, beliefs that are not true for you, they're really not true for anybody, but the beliefs that aren't true for you and that don't serve you, then it could put us in a place of being paralyzed, feeling kind of lost in the world, lethargic. Uh, just think of, like I said, think of the power color of red and how that the dynamism behind it. So if that gets muted and that, that color red gets, gets the power behind that vibration gets distilled, then you're not going to walk around feeling very empowered to have the life that you want. So we're back to the three A's, access, activate, actualize. So in this stage of of really taking a look at the first chakra, and by the way, speaking of stages, first chakra is developed early childhood, very early, birth to 18 months. And so it's core, right? It holds the, your very first impressions in the world. So um, if, if we're working with empowerment and looking at that first chakra, one of the first things you want to start working on is accessing uh, truth for you. Right? Abraham Hicks does a beautiful uh, 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 analogy of going to a buffet. So if you go along the buffet and there's food there you don't know, you maybe put a little bite on your, your plate. And if you taste it and you don't like it, you spit it out and you don't put any more on your plate, right? So this time of accessing and really learning who you are is so exciting because you get to go along the buffet of life and taste this. Oh, no, that didn't work for me. That's kind of nasty. I'm not going to put it back on again, right? And that's the key because there's so many people that will go through their buffet of life and keep putting the stuff on their plate that they don't like. Because mom told them to, or because the church said you'll go to hell if you don't. It's your life. It's your buffet, your mouth, your taste buds, your experience in this life. Start putting some things on your plate and tasting them and testing them. And if it's a spiritual uh, re-identification that you're ready to have, uh, I often, there's a, there's a chapter in my book here about finding a new God. If what you've been taught spiritually I won't even say the word spiritual because religion and spiritual are two very often different things. So if your religion has taught you something that's truly not working for you, then start finding a new God because it's fundamental. It's to all of it. That first chakra is completely, I, in my, this is a personal opinion, right? Completely dependent on your relationship to your spirit. That first chakra is how you relate and experience the world. And when you see the world through the eyes of your spirit, the power that comes through you and the courage there is, you don't even need courage. Courage is what we need when we're in fear. When you're really walking through this world, knowing that you are a divine being, there isn't fear. There isn't even a need for courage. There isn't that faltering. And you're not uh, subject to all the other things that people are being taught and heard. Because the ultimate truth for you is whatever you connect with as divine power. That's the true power. When we talk about personal power, we're really talking about divine power. We're talking about that spark of extreme vibrational frequency that we can't even wrap our minds around, right? But we get just the tiniest little microscopic atomic speck of it within us. And then we become our own master.
we become who it is that we were born to be. That original seed that was planted within us of our own power can begin to blossom and grow. It has to begin with connecting and finding who God is for you. Who, who and many people don't even like to use that word anymore because of the connotation. It doesn't matter what you end up calling it. It's that connection with your highest consciousness, with the part of you that can walk through this world and not register the fear, not feel the negativity, and understanding that that's, that's someone else's world and they have the right to have those feelings and opinions and judgments, and it's their journey. My journey, my personal journey, my personal power is about knowing that I'm eternal and that I am the spark of the divine, that I am here to presence light. My only purpose in this world is to presence light. And that first chakra can just come alive and you can start to feel guided and know what to do next, divine right action, where to go, what to do, what inspires you. So we're going to do a little uh, exercise here to help open up that first chakra and release some of the fear that, that is ours, that's been planted in us, that we pick up from the world. And the, the term we're going to use, the word, the statement is, I trade in my fear of being stuck and unable to survive. Not I trade in, I release. I release my fear of being stuck and unable to survive. We're going to do it in two parts. All right, so the tapping, those of you that have done it with me know, and we begin here. And we're going to get our eyes going left and right while we do this. So we're tapping right here, side to side, left side, right side. And we say out loud, I release the fear three times on each spot. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And then we come to our temples. Now this is our OCD points. So if you get stuck on some kind of fear around this, you're going to tap right here and say, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And right here, I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And I'm zigzagging my eyes up above, side to side, and down below. And right here, under your nose and under your lip, I trade in, I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I hope you're doing this with me. And then we'll stop and squeeze tight open, tight open, tight open, because we want to condense that energy and blow it out. And then three big breaths. Ah. 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 And then we come down to our collarbones. And side to side. Now, when, you, when you're moving your eyes across the chest, you're accessing the feeling uh, modality. So it's a really pretty important one. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And now you're going to find the points under your armpits that are kind of tender. There's a tender spot there. They're actually related to the spleen. And tapping, I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And the sides of your hands right here. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And we're going to come into right here between the two knuckles. This is called the nine gamut point. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And right in here. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. I release the fear of being stuck and unable to survive. And squeeze tight open, tight open, tight open, and three breaths. Okay, so that's the first part of it. Now we'll go through and we'll reframe it. So we release the fear. And what I was very aware of as I was doing that was the fear. It's not mine. It's not my fear. It's 
it's the fear that's been take, taken into me, that's been, you know, planted. And so I'm being given the question, how do I know when to zigzag? So you're zigzagging your eyes up this way, side to side and that way. There are different modalities, we call them in the brain. So you're accessing different, uh, different parts of the brain when you do this. And you're zigzagging while you're doing your tapping. So we're going to go through now and do some positives. We just released the fear. Now let's, well, we made some room in our meridians. We made some room in our energetic system. So now let's go in and put some positives in the place of it. So we're going to tap right back here. And while we're tapping, the eyes are zigzagging. We, we do a few, few side to side, then a few up above with the eyes, and a few down across the chest. So let's put some positives in here, side to side. I am a strong and I am a strong and open first chakra. I am a strong and open first chakra. I am a strong and open first chakra. I, we always use I am statements. They're, 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 the subconscious loves them. And up, side, up this way, let's move our eyes that way and side to side. I am, I am empowered and clear. I am empowered and clear. I am empowered and clear. Straight ahead, side to side. I am knowing what to do. I am knowing what to do. You see, the first chakra is about action. I am knowing what to do. Under your nose and under your lip. Good. I am safe and prosperous. I am safe and prosperous. I am safe and prosperous. Coming to your collarbones. I'm excited to be alive. I'm excited to be alive. I'm excited, I'm excited to be alive. Under your arms. And moving your eyes side to side up above. I'm expecting the best. I'm expecting the best. I'm expecting the best. I am true joy. I am true joy. I am true joy. Moving your eyes across your chest. I am... I am connected to divine consciousness. I am always connected to divine consciousness. I am divine consciousness. I am empowered. I am empowered. I am empowered to be who I am. I am empowered to be who I am. I am empowered to be who I am. And then take a nice big breath. All right, now just notice how you're feeling. I hope you did that with me. And just take a minute and notice how you're feeling right now compared to how you felt before you began. Pretty simple process. Doesn't take very long. And you can change the words. However, if we're working with first chakra, though, that's really probably the most powerful statement that you can, you can work with. So that was the first A, access, right? Going through and, be, and accessing who you truly are and what it is that you want. And then the second piece of it is let's see what if you're what if you're while doing it what if you yawn while doing it? what does that mean okay great question <laughs> so if you yawn while you're doing it it means part which i would have been doing except i did my own rapid eye session last night and did tons of yawning it's a great sign it's it means that you're releasing energy right? well energy can get released out of the body in lots of ways some sometimes people will shake or they'll, they'll have a jump or but yawning is really typical in rapid eye especially when we're doing the side to side work. Yawning, yawning happens pretty quickly. So it's great. If you yawn, then that means you, re you release something. You release something that was holding that energy in there. So it's a great sign. All right. So access activate. So we access the talking about accessing was finding what it was you truly want, who you are, beginning to taste all the things on the buffet of life and figure out what works for you, not what everybody else wants you to do. And then the second one is activating, which we just did that, that, little exercise we just did can be very powerful in activating uh, an opening in your meridians that helps you come into a place of, of feeling more powerful and present. And then, of course, the actualization, which happens when, and you'll know it's happened, it's a spontaneous um, result of the first two. Right? Actualization happens once we access and activate. And you'll know it's happened when you begin to move through the world in a way that feels better, when you begin to say, no, you know what? That doesn't work for me. I'd rather do this. This is what's true for me. When you're able to say no and 
feel fine about it because you're knowing what's true for you. You know that you've actualized some first chakra power when you start to move through things in a more dynamic way, when you get more clear on what you want and you're able to take action in a way that feels right for you. Okay, so that's our personal power talk for today. And I do hope that you use that little tool I just gave you every day. If you do it every day, you're gonna start noticing all kinds of changes in your energy system, energy field. And when you do the tapping part where I release the fear, you can change it to whatever you'd like. Let's say you're noticing, I don't know, you have a fear of uh, speaking your truth. I release the fear of speaking my truth. And then go back through and do some positives. There's a way to shortcut it, but I like doing it sometimes in two parts because you're getting more tapping. And that tapping opens the meridians and really allows the energies to start to flow more powerfully. And it is all about personal power. So please know as you go forward into this week that um, you belong here. That first chakra tells you that you have the right to exist and you have the right to exist as a divine being. So as you move forward into this week, begin to know deeply within yourself that who you are as a divine being has the right to walk this earth in joy, abundance and a connection with all things so something that came to me this morning is you know that statement if let's say someone's creating a work of art or having great sex or whatever it might be and you feel like the, the, the statement I was one with it's even more than that it's not we're always one with there is no separation what we really mean when we say that is that that illusion of separation, that, that illusion that we're not fully connected with all things all the time, disappeared in that moment. And it wasn't that, okay, that I became one with, with my art. You are one with your art. You are one with your loved ones. You are, we are, there is no separation. It really is an illusion. And in those moments when you feel so connected and so inspired and time just disappears then you're experiencing that 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 who you really are as a fully connected being and that first chakra has so much to do with that and when we go beyond the separation then you begin to really feel that ease of knowing that your power comes from within it comes from that full connection another question can you release other negative emotions during that exercise? Yes, absolutely. That's why I had mentioned, you can say I trade in, I'm not, sorry, I'm doing a different one. I release the fear of. You always, you wanna identify fear usually. Or you can just say, I release it. Let's say you're feeling angry. I release the anger. I release the anger. I release the anger and then go through and do your positives. Right? There's, it's a little different. I've taught one before with the statement, I trade in my blank for blank, which is a very powerful and it's a, it's a shorter version of it. Sometimes, like I said, it's good to do it in two parts because you're getting more tapping in. So yes, you can release other emotions doing it that way. I release whatever it is, uh, especially if, if you can identify a specific fear. I release the fear of moving forward. I release the fear of failing. I release the fear of loss. And then go through and do your positives, right? Using I am statements. It's, it's pretty cool. You can start to see things really shift and change. And sometimes if you're just in a funk, right? Or you're just feeling something, you can't get it out. Or you can't move beyond it. Do a quick tapping on it. And you'll be surprised how quickly you can shift. It doesn't really matter what it is. However, for this week, I would invite you to focus on that first chakra piece. And, and, and if you've got that fear of being stuck and unable to survive, go ahead and get it out of your system. And put some good news back in. Okay, before we go, I'm going to make a couple of quick announcements. The first week in February, February 2nd and 3rd, I believe, or 3rd and 4th, I'm going to be having a very um, small group uh, working together here in this office. It will be an intensive workshop. It's a deep dive. So for those of you that are really ready to uh, expand, you're ready, you can, see, you can see that next place of consciousness just right there, and you're excited, but you don't quite know how to get there, even though you've done a ton of work, it's the workshop for you. And uh, since it is such a small group, I'm going to be conducting interviews. So if you have any interest 
in uh, really making some massive deep shifts over a two-day period, um, give me a call. Uh, email me, uh, Facebook message, um, and just let me know that you'd like some information about it and we can do an interview process. And it won't be therapy. Remember, I'm not a therapist. So we're not going to be talking a lot of story. If you want some place that's going to tell you tons of story, then you may want to go somewhere else. This is going to be about bottom lining. Okay. I, all this garbage happened to me. It's not who I am. I'm ready to really be free and, be, and step into my personal power. It's a personal power workshop. I'm ready to step into my personal power. Let's do it. Let's just release the things that are the blocks, the things that are, that are still holding me back and claim claim who I am so it'll be really fun and like I said you've got to be ready for it so you can contact me at Paula K Bronte at gmail.com and that's the letter K Paula letter K Bronte at gmail.com you can also send me a Facebook message I prefer email honestly Paula K Bronte at gmail.com it's probably the best way to get to me okay and my book I forgot the, the title for a second. I had to look. A Call to Mastery, Living the Art of Ascension. I've had lots of people tell me they love it, actually. I had someone tell me the other day he's reading it for the third time. It's like, wow, that's pretty inspiring. I should do more with this. You can find it on uh, Amazon, hardcover, or a Kindle, or ebook. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And may you have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed week feeling empowered and alive.